Oh, hey, welcome to Elixum. My name is Florian, and I look forward to assisting you this evening. I do have a couple of guests to attend to first, but I promise that I'll be with you shortly, okay? <laughs> Hi, uh, thanks for your patience, Miss Pearson. So, when you visited at high noon, the apothecary was filled with dozens of guests, demanding their usual remedies. So, due to the number of people in here, I was quite overwhelmed, to say the least. Nevertheless, I sincerely apologize for the delay. So, here you are. I have the correct items for you now. Mm -hmm. Here is your wrap package, complete with everything that you will need. Inside, you will find two remedies for your headaches, and, you know, so when they are relatively mild, do take a handful of these enclosed mustard seeds and the leaves of the rue plant. Uh, crush them together and add just enough water to create a thick paste. Spread the paste on your head and let it rest until the pain disappears. I have also included a small bottle of mandrake oil for occasions when your headaches are exceedingly painful. Place two drops of the oil onto your forehead and rub it thoroughly into the skin. The oil does induce some drowsiness, so you should notice improvement in your sleeping patterns as well. <laughs> yes, that's perfectly fine if you can't remember all these instructions. <laughs> Hell, even I can't. But that's why I wrote down all of the information on a piece of parchment. It's already tucked inside of the package. You are most welcome. Is there anything else I can assist you with? No? Very well then. Due to today's delay, I will only ask for three shillings. Yes, yes, I'm quite certain. I truly am sorry that you were required to wait. Lowering the cost is the least I can do. It's not a bother at all. My only wish is for you to feel better. Thank you for your payment. Please come see me in about a week to inform me of your well-being. Alright? <laughs> yes, I do tend to worry a little too much. You should know by now that I always follow up with my guests to ensure that my remedies are most suitable. If anything needs to be adjusted, then I will gladly do so. <laughs> of course, that's what I'm here for. Now, if you don't need any more assistance, then I shall bid you good evening. Have a safe journey home. <laughs> Do not look so glum, Mr. Ashdown. I have certainly not forgotten about you. Here you are. I appreciate that you were able to drop by this evening as well. Inside of this package is a large vial filled with a concoction that should heal your persistent cough. The concoction has a thick syrup-like texture, and it contains longworth leaves suspended in water with traces of honey, butter, cumin, anise, and licorice. Drink this twice a day, once at sunrise and the other at sunset. If your coughing spasms does worsen at any point, then I suggest chewing on a radish root. <laughs> Indeed, I have included enough radish root to last you a week. It's my pleasure. How's your wife, by the way? Is her pregnancy coming along well? Ugh, oh, the poor woman. I'm terribly sorry to hear that she's still suffering from nausea. I was afraid of that, given how ill she was when I saw her last. But that's why I enclosed a bundle of mint leaves and ginger root with no additional cost. You should take both ingredients, crush them, and mix them with warm water. Now have her drink that when she is feeling nauseous, and it should help to settle the discomfort in her abdomen. The gratitude is appreciated, but really, I'm just happy to help. Of course, anything for you. Are you alright then? Or would you care for more assistance? You are perfectly content? <laughs> Splendid. If that is all, then I kindly ask for four shillings, please. Thank you. Please give Mrs. Ashdown my best. I wish the two of you and your little one many safe and healthy days ahead. <sighs> oh, <laughs> uh, apologies for the wait. Um, how can I assist? Mm -hmm. 
Oh, it's you. <laughs> oh, goodness. I did not expect to see you here. N no, not at all. You are always welcome here at Elixum. This place is just as available to you as any other villager. What I meant was... Well, I never anticipated that we would meet under these conditions. When you stepped inside, I was so distracted that I didn't even notice who you were. How foolish of me, considering that your crimson cloak should have revealed your identity. No one else would wear it with the same elegance that you do, nor could they create something as masterful. You are by far the most talented and kindest tailor that the Mystic Haven has ever had. So, for everything you have done for the village, you deserve to be greeted with respect and tenderness. But it seems that I was too careless. I'm deeply sorry. Could, could you find it in your heart to ever forgive me? Uh, uh, your hand is resting softly against my cheek, and your eyes are staring so deeply into mine. May I ask why? This was the only way you could think of to draw my attention and prevent me from spiraling further into a fit of nerves? <laughs> uh, forgive me. I, I do tend to ramble when I'm nervous. It's an awful habit, but one that I cannot seem to break. <laughs> yes, you make me nervous. But it's not because you're touching me. If you're concerned whether your actions are improper, then you have nothing to fear. In fact, I welcome your touch, uh, truly. However, I am afraid that your proximity is having an unsteadying effect on me. So could you please take a step back to allow me to think clearly? <laughs> Thank you. <sighs> um, please do not take this as a form of rejection. I do want you near me. In fact, it's something I yearn for. But my mind, which endlessly cycles with information, suddenly becomes blank, and I just can't seem to form coherent thoughts when you are this close. If I wish to appear even vaguely sane, then there has to be at least a little bit of distance between us. You did hear that correctly, yes. I myself do not fully understand this phenomenon, nor can I explain it. Though, if I were to completely be truthful, I would say that I was mesmerized by you long before this meeting. How long, you ask? <laughs> Do you remember the day you explored Mr. Caven with my brother, Cassian? You do recall the day. That's good. Well, <laughs> I'm not certain if you were aware, but I saw you walking around, your bright cloak visible in the muted sea of colors. Even though I spend most of my day within the apothecary, I occasionally check in on guests who cannot leave their homes to visit me. So, while I was out, I noticed that you spoke with the villagers. You were thoughtful and compassionate, always eager to learn about everyone's trade and their lives at home. It was your warmth that drew each person in, myself included. So, for the first time... My heart began racing at a speed that would rival my horse when he decides that he wants to run. I wanted to desperately make your acquaintance, but I could not. A town some meters away requested my assistance, as they did not have an apothecary to provide the necessary remedies for a few individuals who had fallen ill. 
Selfishly, I wanted to stay in Mystic Haven, at least until we could meet, but uh, my duties were far greater than my desires. Therefore, I took my horse and left. <sighs> Believe me, I'm aware it has been more than a fortnight since that fateful day. You're wondering why I have not approached you since then? <laughs> That is a fair question. The truthful answer is that I simply could not. Every time I tried to visit you to bid you good morning or evening, my stomach would tie itself in knots. Not even my most calming remedy could alleviate the tension. It remained clinging to me, so much that it prevented me from moving forward. Instead, I always fled knowing that if I approached you, I would likely fumble my words and leave you with a horrible impression of myself. Unlike my brother, I don't exactly have a natural ability to woo or charm others. And unlike my sister, I am not forthright. <sighs> I am just a man who seeks solace in his plants and flowers and uses those items to treat the ailments of others. Surely you would not have found me the least bit interesting. So I thought it would be best if I just kept to myself. After all, admiring from afar often leads to less heartache. Mm -hmm. Oh dear, your cheeks have suddenly flushed. And you're biting your lower lip. And why is it that you cannot seem to meet my gaze? Are you... All right? You're certain? You know you are inside an apothecary, yes? Whatever your affliction may be, I'm confident that I can find a remedy for you. Um, pardon? Your voice was so quiet that I could not understand what you were saying. Could you say that once more, please? Oh. Oh. You thought about approaching me yourself, but for similar reasons they decided not to. Please tell me you're being truthful. I, I do not think my heart could handle it if you were jesting. Y you're not jesting? You were just as eager to meet me, but every time you tried, you were frozen in place, afraid of ruining our first meeting. Just like me. <laughs> All this time, we could have been in each other's company, and yet, we were both so fearful of what the other would think that we stayed away. What a shame, given every missed opportunity. <laughs> yes, you are right. We are here now. And that's all that matters. Although I must say that you deserve the credit. You were the one who was brave enough to break the cycle. May I ask why? What made you decide to come and visit me this evening? Ah, Cassian delivered my latest arrangement of flowers. And that was enough for you to gather the courage to travel across the village to see me. <laughs> I... I... well... I'm delighted that the arrangements was to your liking. Admittedly, I was worried because i never done something like that before. Especially not of that caliber. And especially not for someone like you. Lately, I have been experimenting with particular flowers to learn more about their unique properties. One day, I discovered that I could alter the petal color of orchids if I placed dye directly in the stem. Orchids that grow naturally tend to be white, or in shades of pink, yellow, and purple. While those are beautiful on their own, I wanted something far more vibrant. To achieve the shade of scarlet that I did, I used berries and rose petals and injected the dye into the stems of the white orchids I sent you. I thought that the scarlet was the most appropriate color, given how well you take in those rich red hues. <laughs> You're smiling. By the heavens. 
It's a smile that is enough and so bright that it would illuminate the entire village in the darkness. I have seen that lovely smile directed at others, but never at me. May I ask what I could possibly have done to have earned such a marvelous thing? You find it endearing when I speak about my craft? Moreover, you're touched that I thought of something so specific for you. Well, of course. It, it's you, after all. You would like to know what I mean by that? <laughs> Goodness, how do I even begin? I suppose it would be the easiest to start with the most obvious thing, which is how brilliant you have shined since your arrival. I'll have you know that I can't go anywhere without hearing the villagers sing praises or seeing your creations modeled on various people. Beyond your talent, you have won the affections of both my brother and sister. They are good judges of character, and they think the world of you. As if that wasn't enough, I have seen with my own eyes how pure of heart you are. Why, just the other day, you gave a precious gift to Mary. As you know, her family struggles financially, so they cannot afford well-tailored clothes. But after seeing her running around the village, you took a liking to her and created something that was perfectly suited for her needs. I noticed that she left your shop with the giddiest look on her face, wearing her new sapphire cloak. <sighs> Given all these things, how could someone not lavish their time and attention on you? It would be a fool not to. Rather, I would be a fool not to. The truth is, I may not be able to articulate my feelings with words or chivalrous actions, but I do know how to communicate through the plants and flowers that I adore. So, I hope that this does not make you think less of me. No? If anything, that makes you think more highly of me? <laughs> I... well... I thank you. I'm surprised, but I'm also relieved to hear you say that. Well, speaking of flower arrangements, did you find each one agreeable? Okay. Cassian and Griselda both confirmed that they had been delivered, but when I begged for them to provide detailed explanations regarding your reactions, they only gave me coy smiles. You found each of them breathtaking? Really? Ah, <sighs> thank heavens. I sincerely hoped that you would like them, though I was never certain. The flowers that were used in the arrangements were selected with purpose. While they were all physically appealing, the more pressing matter was what each one signified. Oh. You would like to know the meaning behind each flower? Uh, <laughs> are you certain? Some of the meanings are rather... Um, affectionate. That was why I never included a letter. If I had told you what each flower signified, surely you would have thought of me as mad or foolish. I appreciate that you would never think that of me. However... The significance of each flower was meant to be my own little secret. It was a way for me to reveal my thoughts and feelings without anyone ever fully knowing. But, well, now that you're standing here with pleading eyes, how could I deny you? I would be willing to share this information, though I believe it would be easier to show you rather than tell you. Would you... Um, like to see where I keep my collection of plants and flowers? You you would? Wonderful. Please, give me a moment to change the sign on the door. I do not think that villagers will mind if I close a bit early this evening. Most already visited at noon, so I expect uh, at least a few people will wander in at this hour. Aww. Hello there. 
I was wondering where you had scampered off to. Uh, <laughs> my apologies for not introducing you earlier to my feline companion. This is Shadow. <laughs> yes, I gave her that name because she follows me around like one. Most of my guests have grown accustomed to her presence. If some find that they are allergic, then I keep her in a safe area away from them. Yes, you may pet her. She's perfectly friendly. Oh, she's fond of most individuals, but she appears to have taken quite a liking to you. More so than I have ever seen her, actually. <laughs> of course, you may visit her as often as you would like. She would certainly appreciate it. Unfortunately, I'm afraid I'm not always the best company. When I'm in the middle of assisting someone, it can be difficult to pull away. At times, she will whine incessantly at me, begging for attention, which, of course, I am unable to give during those times. <laughs> I think I could watch you interact with Shadow all evening long, but may I ask if you would still like to proceed? Yes? Very well then. The room is just up ahead. Hey, you stay here, Shadow. Allow me a few moments with our guest, would you? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, no. Uh, we will not be visiting that room on the left. No one is allowed in there. For good reason. Oh, uh, but, uh, don't be alarmed. Uh, that is simply where my toxic specimens are housed. Oh, <laughs> no, I can assure you that I do not create poisonous concoctions used to harm individuals. Though, I do have extensive knowledge on how they are made and administered. It's just that it was a requirement that I learned all of these necessary information while I was an apprentice. <sighs> Alright, now, the reason why I have a room dedicated specifically to plants such as hemlock, belladonna, and henbane is because <laughs> I have been working for years to find a cure for the illness that afflicted my parents. I assume that Cassian has told you this story already? Hmm. Precisely. They perished because the physician and I could not find a cure. We searched endlessly and still we had no answers. I have never forgiven myself for such a mistake, so I plan on doing everything in my power to prevent it from happening again. No one should have to suffer the way my siblings and I did. That is why I spend every spare moment locked in that room, experimenting and looking for a way, any way, that may have caused their illness. I am determined to find a cure, even if it means that I may be harmed in the process. Yes. Some harm has already befallen me. That is why the skin on my hands are marred. While I do wear a mask to protect myself against any deadly fumes, I don't actually own a pair of gloves that will prevent contact with the plants. Well, most gloves are too thick and will not allow me to complete the delicate, refined work that is necessary for experimentation. Huh? You believed that you could create a gloves for me that would protect my hands and allow me to experiment? Are, are you certain? <laughs> I... I don't know what to say. I would never ask you to do such a thing, but if you are offering, then all I can truly say is thank you. Thank you from the deepest parts of my soul. I... I struggle to even think of how I could repay you for such generous actions. As long as I continue to create flower arrangements for you, you'll be satisfied? <laughs> then... I believe we have a deal. 
I would be more than happy to continue doing that. Ah, speaking of which, we have actually just arrived at the appropriate door. Now. Welcome to my favorite part of Elixim. Truthfully, I sometimes hide in this room when I need a moment to collect myself. The things in here bring me such comfort. Would you like a tour? <laughs> of course. Then shall we begin right here? These are lavender and mint plants, and they're actually what I used for your first arrangement. When Cassian told me that you had difficulty sleeping during the first few nights in Mystic Haven, I sent him along with a bunch of lavender and mint so that you could place them beneath your pillow. The soothing aromas were supposed to be gentle and lull you to sleep in a peaceful slumber. Beyond its healing properties, gifting lavender to someone means that you are devoted to them. Gifting mint, on the other hand, means that you wish to bring warmth upon them. <laughs> Well, I did tell you that some of these symbolic meanings can be tender and emotional. Are you truly certain that you would like to know what they are? <laughs> I suppose your radiant smile is answer enough. Shall we carry on then? The second arrangement involved three flowers. Forget-me-nots, lilies, and roses. Right here are the forget-me-nots, which signify that the giver respects the recipient. Do you see the white lilies with the yellow interiors that are next to them? When those are gifted, it indicates that the recipient is pure of heart. And uh, over there, finally, we have the roses. They are, of course, the most recognized flower, both of their beauty and their significance. If you look to your right, you will find peach ones. When they are gifted, it means that the giver is sincere in their appreciation for the recipient. Light pink roses indicate admiration. Um, you appear a little dazed. Are you alright? Was I speaking too quickly? <laughs> oh, so you were simply overwhelmed by my, um... Explanations. <laughs> Is that a good overwhelmed or a bad one? A good one? <laughs> well, I can't lie. I'm relieved to hear that. <clears throat> now, there is one more flower that I would like to show you. Now, come, follow me. <laughs> So, as you can see, I grow each type of orchid here. Even though roses are viewed as the most romantic flower, I actually believe that orchids are more fascinating. Their symbolic meaning is ardent affection, but beyond that, they are known to be one of the most resilient flowers in the world. They can bloom in the harshest, most troubling conditions, and that is why I chose this one for you. Like. I was thinking that, just like these orchids, you survived a cruel situation and have thrived in a new area. That endurance and spirit that must have taken is remarkable. You are remarkable. Uh, why are you moving c closer? I, uh... <sighs> You know that I cannot form clear thoughts when you're this close to me. For once, you would like me to just feel rather than think? I, I'm not sure how to do that. Uh, okay. Then, will you guide me? Thank you. Mm -hmm. You're 
You're resting your forehead against mine now. Mm hmm This is... This is great. <laughs> yes. Place your lips against mine. Please. Did, did we, did, did we just kiss? <laughs> no, you have nothing to be sorry for. In fact, I enjoyed it, truly. What we shared was perfect in every way. <sighs> I understand that people who kiss generally find one another attractive on some level, but I need to ask you, what does this mean to you? Do you have affections for me in the same way that I have for you? Goodness, I, I don't know how to process all of this information. Are you absolutely certain? It's me who you have affection for, and not someone else. Not my brother, or not my sister, or another villager. You want... M me? Of all people? <laughs> you have just made me the happiest man in the world. May I ask how long you felt this way? You have yearned for me since the day you explored Mr. Haven. You glanced inside the apothecary while the window was open and saw how I assisted others. Ah, that's when your heart knew that I was the one for you. <laughs> It seems that we truly are a well-matched pair. As skiddy as I am, I must warn you, though, that I don't have any experience with this. I have never felt this way about anyone before. And truthfully, I cannot guarantee that this will be natural or easy. But, if you will allow me to, I would be honored to court you. Properly, that is. Y you will allow me? <laughs> Thank you. N huh? May I ask why you have suddenly backed away and are reaching into your bag? Mm -hmm. Why do you have a wrap package that is stamped with your tailoring shop's emblem? Wait. That's for me? But why? It's for everything I've done for you in this village? <laughs> I don't even think I've done that much. But if you think that I deserve this, then may I open it? Is this what I think it is? How, how did you know that green is my favorite color? <laughs> oh, he just assumed it was based on my love of plants. Well, that is one accurate guess. This cloak is stunning. I have never owned something so dashing before. And now you say that this is mine. I must be dreaming. Oh. You have a way to prove that I'm not dreaming? How so? Oh, mm hmm <laughs> Perhaps you are right. 
I could never imagine kisses that are this perfect. Uh, thank you. I adore the cloak, your kisses, and everything that you are. My orchid. My heart belongs to you. Your heart belongs to me as well. <laughs> then, perhaps, we should seal it with a kiss. I'm glad you agree. <laughs>